Hey scholars, it's Ms. Colma here. So we are starting a brand new week of our online instruction. We are continuing learning about the American Revolution and I am gonna go show a lot of wonder because I wonder who we're gonna hear about today. Hmm, this is the legend of Betsy Ross. I wonder who Betsy Ross was. Hmm, if you have any wonders that you wanna ask about this, the lessons this week, you can have mom, dad, grandma, grandpa real quick text me or if you have your own phone, you can text me as well, okay? I also want you to be listening because I am going to start putting points up for which class responds more to my questions. There will be at least one question in this whole video that mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever can text me the an your answer to. And I'm gonna, we're gonna see every day who has more answers, ISU or Ashford. So if you want your class to have more answers, make sure you're getting in those responses through text, okay? You can text me anytime, day or night. I wonder who Betsy Ross is, and I wonder what this legend is all about. So let's get started so we can find out. We're gonna go ahead and do our vocab at bats first. I'm gonna give the shout outs. We're gonna see where we stand with which class has been responding more. We're gonna go over the objective, the vocabulary words, the read aloud, check our understanding, and I'll walk you through our packet work, okay? All right, vocab at bats. Who's got the word? George Washington was named the approved of the continent of the army. George Washington was named the commander in chief of the army. George Washington was named the declaration of the army. Three, two, one. He was named the commander in chief. George Washington was named the commander in chief of the army. The Patriots wanted to be completely approved. They didn't want to listen to the king anymore. The Patriots wanted to be completely independent. They didn't want to listen to the king anymore. The Patriots wanted to be completely declaration. They didn't want to listen to the king anymore. Remember, you can just shout out the answer since you're at home. Three, two, one. The Patriots wanted to be completely independent. They didn't want to listen to the king anymore. The judges approved, made it clear the man was innocent. The judges independent, made it clear the man was innocent. The judges declaration, made it clear the man was innocent. Three two, one. The judge's declaration made it clear the man was innocent. The Congress approved the Declaration of Independence and sent it to be copied. The Congress independent the Declaration of Independence and sent it to be copied. The Congress declaration the Declaration of Independence and sent it to be copied. Three, two, one. The Congress approved the Declaration of Independence and sent it to be copied. Scholar shout outs. Let's see who has responded more, ISU or Ashford. ISU. I haven't really heard from any of you at ISU at all. So at the moment, I have no responses from ISU. For Ashford, there is one scholar who has been reaching out every single day, sending me pictures of work or sending me their answer to their questions. So to that one scholar, you know exactly who you are. And I am so proud of you. Keep up the great work. Everyone else, come on, guys, just to have a mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever, send me a quick text. It can even be after you go to bed. Just send me the text of your answers, OK? All right, this means we're getting ready to move into our objective. Objective, objective, we learn all about it. I can write two sentences about the original flag of the United States. I can write two sentences about the original flag of the United States. It's time for vo vo vocabulary. Our first word is alternating. Our first word is alternating. Alternating means following one after another. Alternating means following one after another. The black and white shapes are alternating in this picture. If you look at this picture carefully, you see white, black, white, black. That's alternating. Our next word is patriotism. Our next word is patriotism. Patriotism is loyalty to one's country. Patriotism is loyalty to one's country. Many people show their patriotism to the United States by flying the American flag. Our next word is represent. Our next word is represent. We've already heard the word representatives and represent is in that word. So let's hear this definition. To be a symbol of something, to speak or act on behalf of others, 
to be a symbol of something, to speak or act on behalf of others. So when we think about the representatives who speak on our behalf on what to do with tax money, we're thinking that they represent us. The stars on the US flag represent each of the states. If you ever sit down and count the stars on the flag, there are 50 of them, one for each state. Our next word is seamstress. Our next word is seamstress. A seamstress is a woman whose job is to sew. A seamstress is a woman whose job is to sew. The seamstress mended the ripped dress. The seamstress mended the ripped dress. All right, you know exactly what I'm looking for. Time for the next part. Where are we? Who are these men? So, so far we've heard about the Boston Tea Party. They were not happy to be about taxation without representation. Paul Revere's ride and the shot heard around the world and the resulting Declaration of Independence. So, you can go ahead and point on your tablet or computer. I'm gonna give you three seconds to answer each one. Which of these three men was named the commander in chief? If you remember his name, shout it out. Which of these three men was named the commander in chief of the army? Three, two, one. Yep, George Washington was named the commander in chief of the army. Which of these three men lived in Great Britain for a while? and is an inventor from Philadelphia. Which of these men is an inventor from Philadelphia who lived in Great Britain? Three, two, one. Benjamin Franklin, he was an inventor in Philadelphia. He lived in England. He tried to help smooth over the situation and he had a gift for helping people work together when they disagreed. Last but not least, which of these three men was chosen to write the Declaration of Independence? Which of these three men was chosen to write the Declaration of Independence? Three, two, Thomas Jefferson, writer of the Declaration of Independence. As we go forward, I'm gonna have more about these three men that we're gonna do. We're gonna also be writing some captions for them as well. So be ready to know who they are and write about them. And I can't wait to see your captions. Today, you will hear about the legend of a woman named Betsy Ross, how she creates the first flag for our new country, and you'll hear how the flag in the legend is similar to the flag we have today. So the flag that we're gonna hear about was actually made. We still have this flag preserved in museums all over the country. So we still have this flag. This is a legend. You will remember from way back when we learned about the Aztec, a legend is a story that's told over time that may or may not be true. So we don't know for sure if this is the person who made the flag, but this is a story we tell about how the flag was created. All right, go ahead and show me your best GLP. I can't see it, but I can picture all of the scholars in my mind with their very best GLP, ready to hear all about the legend of Betsy Ross. Betsy and John Ross were newlyweds in 1773 when they opened their seamstress shop in the busy port town of Philadelphia. In that word newlyweds, I hear two separate words, newly and wed. I think that means that they just got married in 1773 when they opened the shop. A seamstress is a person who sews with needle and thread to make or repair things made of cloth. John hung a sign outside their house at 239 Ark Street. The needle and spool of thread helped people find their shop. So not everyone can read. So that sign says, hey, come here and this is where you can have things mended or made. Also, they couldn't go to the store to buy clothes like we do today. This is the person you'd go to to buy brand new clothes if your mom or your grandma couldn't make your clothes for you. So you either made your clothes or had your clothes made for you. Those were your only options back in the American Revolution. At about the same time Betsy and John were having a party to celebrate their wedding, Patriots in Boston were having their own party, the Boston Tea Party. And you remember what kind of party that was. The Patriots used the sea as a giant teacup, dumping shiploads of tea into it. After that night, the colonies decided to work together to come up with a plan for answering the British demands for taxes. The meeting of representatives from all 13 colonies, the first Continental Congress, was held in the Ross's hometown of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Midway between the New England colonies and the Southern colonies, Pennsylvania was an important meeting place for colonists from all over. John and Betsy founded an exciting city in which to live, especially as the Patriots began to gather there. John agreed with the Patriot cause and wanted to break away from Great Britain. One night, Betsy's husband, John, died really suddenly. 
It was very sad, and it hadn't even been three years since they'd celebrated their wedding. After John's death, Betsy decided to run the seamstress business on her own. Betsy Ross was an independent woman. She didn't need anybody's help. She was completely self-reliant. She took great pride in her work and had become well known throughout the colonies for her tiny even stitches and beautiful cloth. When men gathered in Philadelphia for meetings, they often ordered clothing from Betsy for their families at home. No order was too difficult for her. As war approached, Betsy was asked to make flags for the Pennsylvania Navy. The Continental Army led by General George Washington flew one of her flags as well. So a lot of the Continental Militia and Navy have asked her to make flags. So they all have flags made by Betsy. Hmm, I wonder, I wonder if they all have their own flags, what does it have to do with the, our flag today? What do all of these different flags have to do with our flag today? Hmm, I wonder who else has this wonder. There is a famous legend about Betsy Ross. Remember that legend is a story that's told through the years and it may or may not be true. According to this legend, Betsy sat in her shop sewing and enjoying the light of a warm summer evening in June 1776 when she heard a loud rapping at her door or a loud knocking. John's uncle, George Ross, stood before her with two other men. One of them was General George Washington himself. Good evening, madam, General Washington began. We have a very important job that needs to be done very quickly. As your husband John was a patriot, and you are known to be the best seamstress in the colonies, we feel that you are the right person for the job. Do come in, Betsy replied. I will heat the kettle for tea, and you can explain to me your business. Thank you kindly, dear Betsy, said George, George Ross as he entered the house, but I'm afraid we do not have time to sit down. As you may have heard, the Continental Congress is meeting here in Philadelphia for the second time. We are, we are on our way to a meeting this very evening. Soon, quite soon, we will formally declare our independence from Britain. We must be ready with a new flag, for we will no longer want to fly the flag of the British King. Betsy stood still, listening to his words, and turning to General Washington, who had taken a scrap of paper out of his coat pocket. Mrs. Ross, General Washington said, this is your chance to show your patriotism, your love for your country, as your late husband John did. I've drawn a rough design sketch for the new flag. Please take a look and let me know what you think. We would like for you to sew the first flag of a new nation, the 13 colonies united against Great Britain. Betsy took the slip of paper from General Washington's hand. On it was a square drawing of 13 stripes and 13 stars. Betsy nodded her head then looked up into the general's face. What did the design have? Why did the design have these 13 stripes and 13 stars? Hmm, I wonder if the 13 stripes and 13 stars represents the 13 colonies. Yes, she smiled. I accept, I will gladly make the flag. Might I offer you just one suggestion, sir? George Washington liked Betsy's suggestion of a five-pointed star instead of the six-pointed one he had drawn. Then the three visitors turned and left as quickly as they had come. Betsy set to work on the flag the very next day. Taking down a red bolt or roll of cloth from the shelf, she measured and cut seven strips of equal length and width. Then she did the same thing with a bolt of white cloth, only this time cutting six strips. She applied her famous even stitches along the length of each stripe, first white, then red, until the 13 stripes of alternating colors joined together to form a large rectangle. Next, Betsy measured and cut a square of, from a bolt of blue cloth and carefully stitched it into the upper left-hand corner of the flag. Days later, when she had completely finished, 13 white stars almost twinkled perfectly in a perfect circle against the dark blue background. When Betsy sh showed George Washington and his fellow representatives the finished flag, they were very pleased. They knew this flag would represent their new country well. This new flag stood as an important symbol to the men who gathered under it for 4th of July when they voted to approve their letter of independence to King George. One year later, in July 1777, the Continental Congress officially adopted Betsy Ross's flag, the Stars and Stripes, as the national flag of the United States of America.
And that's the end of the read aloud for today. Check my understanding. Now, one of these questions is going to be bolded. That is my wonder question. Now, my wonder questions this week are questions that I'm asking specifically looking for you to have mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, whoever text me your answer specifically. So these are questions you can turn and talk about with someone at home or the one, the bolded one at the end, text me your answer. I want to see who texts more answers. I wonder who will text more. I see your Ashford. Let's find out. What type of work did Betsy Ross do? She was a what? Hmm. 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If you said something related to she sewed or she made the flag or you were looking for the word seamstress, you're correct. The title of the read aloud is The Legend of Betsy Ross. What is a legend? 10, If you said something to the effect of a legend is a story that may or may not be true that's been told for a long time you're absolutely correct the first official flag of the united states you have a coloring sheet of this that was sent out it, so i want you to take a minute and think about what that flag looks like and finally here's my big wonder question why are there 13 stars and 13 stripes on the flag why does it have 13 stars and 13 stripes I want you to think, 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 think. Have mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever text me this answer, all right? Why do you think there are 13 stars and stripes? So we're gonna talk about the events and then you're gonna sequence them in random order, okay? So first we have the colonists getting super, super, super mad about the taxes and not being able to vote for representatives to decide what to do with the taxes. The, colonies, the colonists in Boston got angrier and angrier about the tea tax and ultimately it led to this event here, the Boston Tea Party. After the Boston Tea Party, we had the first Continental Congress where they were not, they were saying, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's not get too angry. Let's just keep level heads. So Boston Tea Party, first Continental Congress. Then we had Paul Revere's Midnight Ride and the Battle of Lexington. After the Battle of Lexington, we had the Second Continental Congress, which ultimately decided on the Declaration of Independence. So now it's your turn to sequence these events, all right? So we had the Boston Tea Party, the First Continental Congress, then we had the Battle at Lexington and the Declaration of Independence. Don't get tricked. You'll have five seconds to tell me if it happened first, second, third, or fourth. Here we go. The Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence. First, second, third, or fourth. Three, two, one. It happened fourth. It was the last thing that happened. Next up, ooh, the Battle of Lexington. First, second, third, or fourth. Five, four, three, two, one. Third, the Battle of Lexington is the third event that we've learned about. The Boston Tea Party was the Boston Tea Party. First, second, third, or fourth? Three, two, one. It was first. This was the very first act that we learned about. Finally, the first Continental Congress. Was it first, second, third, or fourth? The first Continental Congress. Three, two, one. It was second. The second Continental Congress was the second thing that happened. This is a page that was sent to you. If you want to print it out and write on it, that's fine. If you want to just ha tell mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, whoever, which order it's in and have them text it, that's fine too. Um, write one under the event that occurred first, two under the event that occurred second, three under the event that occurred third, four under the event that occurred fourth, all right? And finally, the last piece of packet work today, The Legend of Betsy Ross. You have this coloring page of the original flag. Now remember, the background for the stars is blue and there are seven red stripes. So if you have some crayons or markers or colored pencils at home, you can color this in. Remember, the background is blue and there are seven red stripes. I'm not looking for you to create your own flag here. I'm looking for you to correctly color the original flag. All right? And then you have lines here 
to write one to two sentences about the original flag. What did the stars and stripes represent? Who do we think so sewed this flag? Why did we need a new flag? So I want you to write on these lines one to two things you learned about the original flag of the United States. And that's it for today. That is our only thing today. Again, remember to have mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, someone text me your answers to my bolded wonder question about why there are 13 stars and stripes. Why are there 13 stars and stripes? I wonder who I'll get more answers from, ISU or Ashford. I wonder who I'll get more answers from, ISU or Ashford. Until then, stay inside, stay safe, and I miss you all. Bye.